Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Scott Giacomucci. I'm the director and founder of the Phoenix Center for Experiential Trauma Therapy in Media, Pennsylvania. I am a doctor of clinical social work and board certified diplomatic clinical social work. And I uh, wanted to take a moment to create a video specifically about social work core values. I feel like uh, for all of us, that are practicing as social workers, teaching others how to be social workers, or learning how to be social workers, that it's really fundamental that we take some time to understand and critically reflect on and embody the six core values of the social work profession. So these six core values really make social work social work. These six core values are similar to other professions, but also uniquely different than similar professions like psychology or counseling, for example. The six core values of the social work profession outlined in NASW's Code of Ethics uh, really articulate what it means to be a social worker. And so it makes sense then that any of us wanting to be social workers or wanting to be better social workers uh, might spend some time reflecting on these six core values. So the six core values are service, social justice, the dignity and worth of each person, emphasizing the importance of human relationships, integrity, and competence. These are the six core values of the Social Work Code of Ethics. In a moment, I'm going to go into more details about all six of those core values. But before we get there, I thought it might be useful to take a moment and read NASW's preamble to their code of ethics, which comes right before they articulate these six core values. I thought the preamble here really sets the stage for understanding the philosophy of the social work profession and these core values which uh, emerge from, from and uphold the social work profession. So the preamble. The primary mission of the social work profession is to enhance human well-being and help meet basic human needs of all people with particular attention to the needs and empowerment of people who are vulnerable, oppressed, and living in poverty. A historic and defining feature of social work is the profession's dual focus on individual well-being in the social context and the well-being of society. Fundamental to social work is attention to the environmental forces that create, contribute to, and address problems in living. Social, work, social workers promote social justice and social change with and on behalf of clients. The term clients is used inclusively to refer to individuals, families, groups, organizations, and communities. Social workers are sensitive to cultural and ethnic diversity, and strive to end discrimination, oppression, poverty, and other forms of social injustice. These activities may be in the form of direct practice, community organizing, supervision, consultation, administration, advocacy, social and political action, policy development and implementation, education, and research and evaluation. Social workers seek to enhance the capacity of people to address their own needs. Social workers also seek to promote the responsiveness of organizations, communities, and other social institutions to individual needs and social problems. And then it goes on to say, the mission of the social work profession is rooted in a set of core values. These core values, embraced by social workers throughout the profession's history, are the foundation of social work's unique purpose and perspective. So this constellation of core values reflects what is unique to the social work profession. Core values and the principles that flow from them must be balanced within the context and complexities of the human experience. So these six core values really applied to all social workers, regardless of what roles we might be playing in our agencies. And these six core values, uh, we can think of them as ethical guides for helping us make decisions and to decide what to prioritize, where to go next, when we're in the midst of the complexities in our practice environments and 
considering all the complexities of the human experience. So the first core value is service. Social workers' primary goal is to help people in need and to help address social problems. So this first core value, service, this uh, articulates the social worker places service over their own self-interest. Not to the point of detriment of their own health or mental well-being, I'll add. And we'll talk about self-care in a little bit. The uh, 2021 revisions to the Social Work Code of Ethics actually uh, elevate the importance of self-care as an ethical imperative for social workers. So although this first principle actually states that social workers place service over their own self-interest, I want to add that we we don't do it to the detriment of our own health, well-being, or to the point of compromising our ability to help others on a larger scale. That in terms of service, the importance of helping others and addressing problems becomes a, a primary focus and goal and objective. So social workers are inherently in service. We, we live to serve others. Uh, we work to serve others in all sorts of different capacities and roles. I learned more recently that the term therapist actually has a Greek etymology uh, origins, and it means servant. And so it fits right in here in the context of clinical social work for this first core value of service, that we usually don't get into this field to try to make a ton of money or um, you know, for personal gain, that we're usually choosing the field of social work because we want to get into service. We want to help other people. We want to serve other people. We want to contribute to the greater good of society. And we place that greater good, that service, over our own self-interests often. So the second core value is social justice. This is the core value that really separates social work from counseling or from psychology. Social justice is, is what makes social work uh, particularly unique in many ways, this core value. It's not just uh, something we talk about, but it's articulated as its own core value, equally as important as the other five core values. So uh, the ethical principle that comes along with it uh, the Code of Ethics says simply, social workers challenge social injustice. So as social workers, we have an ethical imperative direction, directive to challenge social injustice uh, whenever it shows up in our agencies, in our work, to help our clients challenge social injustice, to address social injustice in our communities. So social workers work to work for social change especially on the behalf of vulnerable and oppressed communities. As social workers, we try to address issues of poverty, discrimination, oppression, racism, sexism, gender violence, and all the different forms of social injustice. And in doing this, we have to be sensitive to issues related to culture, related to diversity, related to gender. Uh, we have to engage in the work in ways that are culturally responsive and responsible, and also with cultural humility. So uh, in, in this core value, in talking about this core value as social workers, we strive to empower others. We strive to promote accessibility of services and resources and work towards a more equal society. So social, social work and social, social justice go hand in hand. The third core value, which I feel like really also goes hand in hand with social justice, is emphasizing the dignity and worth of every single person. So this is also uh, unique to social work. The language on this is a bit more specific and explicit than in other professions that social workers respect the inherent dignity and worth of every person. So inherent means that it's within, that we believe that every person is born with worth and with dignity, that it can't be taken away from someone, they can't give it away, they can't lose their uh, deservingness because of things they've done or experienced in the past. 
that everybody, no matter what, is worthy. Worthy of being treated with dignity. Everyone has worth and value. And as social workers, we try to uphold and respect the dignity and worth of every single person. This is regardless of their history, regardless of their identity, regardless of their background, their belief systems. Uh, as social workers, uh, we really try to see the goodness in others. Social work is inherently a strength-based philosophy in this way. And the reason why I feel like social justice and seeing the dignity and worth of each person go hand in hand is that we can't we can't uphold one without the other we can't fight for social justice if we don't believe that every person regardless of their identity regardless of their position or access to resources or race or wealth or gender has dignity and worth uh, we can't we can't fight for social justice unless we believe in the dig dignity and worth of each person in each community. And similarly, we can't uphold the dignity and worth of each person if we don't challenge systems, policies, practices, or others who are doing things that devalue the dignity and worth of, of an individual or a group or a community. So I feel like social justice, dignity, and worth really go hand in hand in this way. The next core value is about the importance of human relationships. So this is also uniquely social work. Uh, social workers recognize the central importance of human relationships. This is the ethical principle. So as social workers, we consider the individual within the context of their social environment. We were one of the first professions to focus on not just the individual and their psychodynamics, their feelings, their emotions, their internal drives and parts, but also the social forces, the social environment, the sociodynamics, uh, and the society, communities in which they're a part of, and how that impacts their health and well-being. So as social workers, we believe that relationships are the vehicle for change. And this is you know, really uh, supported by all the psychotherapy research, emphasizing the importance of the therapeutic relationship as one of the most important qualities, most important factors in all outcomes research on psychotherapy. Same is true in group work, that the matrix of relationships in the group, the group cohesion, is uh, synonymous to the therapeutic relationship in one-to-one -one work. And, and similarly, we could think of this same concept on a larger scale in a community and in organizations or society, that the matrix of relationships or the sociodynamics are the vehicle for change. One person in the community supporting another person in the community. One person in an organization supporting someone else in an organization. One person in a group being a therapeutic agent for somebody else in the group. One human in society offering love and care for another human in society. Relationships are the vehicle for change. And as social workers in the change process, we try to really emphasize co-creation and collaboration uh, within this helping process, that we view the client as the expert in their experience. And we try to dismantle some of the power dynamics that are inherent when there's a client and professional relationship or a client and therapist relationship or a professor and student relationship, that we uh, really try to make it collaborative. We try to share decision-making as much as possible. We try to emphasize co-responsibility and co-creation. And all of these ideas are really, I think, embodied particularly in social work with groups. I should say embodied even more so in social work with groups. So as uh, social workers, Peer support and community support become particularly important in the context of the importance of human relationships. And much of our work as social workers 
is about helping clients develop social skills and helping them to uh, cultivate and enhance meaningful relationships in their life. And we do all this through our relationship with our client or the community or the group we're working with. So the importance of relationships. This is really um, validated, this core value, really validated and supported by all the new research that's been emerging on interpersonal neurobiology. Really emphasizing how as human beings, uh, we don't grow up as individuals. Our brains grow in relationship to other brains. That uh, nobody grows or gets sick in uh, by themselves, that we're all impacted by relationships, by attachments, by our caregivers, by our families, by our communities, that uh, relationships and social forces play a huge role in the development, healthy development of any individual, and also play a huge role in all, most or all social and psychological problems or issues. Of the importance of relationships. The fifth core value here is about integrity. And so the ethical principle is that social workers behave in a trustworthy manner. So uh, the way I like to think about integrity is that it's it come it has the same root word as integration, integrity, integration, that we're integrated whole. We have we operate as an integrated whole as professionals, that our personal and professional values are integrated, that our sense of self is integrated, that we're integrated in our actions, our beliefs, and our words, really, that we practice what we preach, that we say what we mean, and we do what we say we're going to do, that we have integrity, and that we can be trusted, uh, that we practice and build professional relationships in ways that are uh, trustworthy. And so integrity also means that we practice in a manner that's consistent with our ethics, our values, and the standards of the social work profession. I think uh, when it comes to integrity, this is also where the importance of self-care can come in that we can't be in integrity with ourselves if we're not taking care of ourselves. And when we're not taking care of ourselves, we're much more likely to uh, fall short on our commitments to others or overcommit ourselves to others or to just not show up in the best way that we could. And so self-care, taking care of ourselves, uh, whatever that looks like for, for you, self-care uh, really helps us maintain integrity in our work. And so uh, this core value of integrity suggests, uh, dictates really, that social workers should act honestly and responsibly. And that we also need to work to address ethical issues within our organizations, within our communities, within our society. Uh, some social work licensing boards actually make social workers mandated reporters of unethical behavior of other professionals uh, out in the field. And so we really have a ethical duty to try to uphold the reputation and the integrity, not just of ourselves, but of our profession as well, to hold our colleagues accountable, to challenge our colleagues to be better, uh, to really promote integrity within the entire profession. And the sixth and final core value is competence. And so the ethical principle that goes along with competence states that social work, so social workers practice within their area of competence and develop and enhance their professional expertise. So this means that we, we understand what our scope of competence is and that we don't practice outside of that scope of competence, that we don't try to implement uh, interventions or take on clients or work with clinical issues or provide services or teach about things that we don't have specialized training, knowledge, and experience around. That uh, I think this goes hand in hand with integrity. Um, 
that we're in integrity with ourself, how we're practicing, what we're teaching, and the commitments that we make. When we commit to a client or commit to students or trainees, that uh, we're in integrity in the sense that we're, we're practicing or teaching within our scope of competence. And so this uh, also helps to ensure that, that safety is present and upheld within our work. Uh, we really start to disrupt safety when we start practicing outside the scope of our competence. And as a trauma therapist, I would, I would say this is especially true when it comes to trauma therapy. Um, it's so unfortunate. So many therapists and social workers uh, get licensed to, to practice and are able to provide psychotherapy, but don't actually receive any specialized training in trauma therapy. And so it's important that we, we pursue ongoing education and training to develop our competencies and that we're not practicing outside the scope of our competency. Doing this in, this, in the context of trauma work uh, is likely to cause harm or re-traumatization with the clients' communities that we're working with. So this sixth core value, competence, it really highlights how learning is a lifelong process that we don't just graduate and stop learning. And this is really built into our licensing boards in that we're required to continue to get continuing education hours in order to renew our, li our license. And personally, I think the 15 hours a year or whatever it is, state to state, is not enough. Um, I know there's you know limits to accessing trainings financially for many folks, but there's plenty of free trainings and low cost trainings that you can find online and many that are good. And it's worth investing in our continuing education and training, uh, paying for continuing education, paying for trainings. I think uh, 15 hours a, a year, <laughs> even though that's the, the requirement by the licensing board, I feel like it's just not enough. Um, but this core value emphasizes that we continue to learn, to grow, to, to receive supervision, to access consultation. We continue to try to be better social workers. Interestingly, this core value competence also states that social workers should strive to contribute to the knowledge, theory, and research base of the profession. Not only that we try to learn, but we also try to contribute to better understanding the complexities of the human experience and different areas of social work practice. Uh, engaging in research, evaluation, getting feedback from our clients, uh, sharing what we've learned with others on YouTube or at conferences or by supervising graduate students or folks working towards their license, participating in professional conferences, uh, presenting events, CE events, trainings. Uh, these are all different ways that we can contribute to new knowledge, theory, research. Writing and publishing is another way. So these are the six core values of the social work profession. Um, and uh, I want to acknowledge at the end of the video here that the most recent update to these, this uh, code of ethics, uh, which came in 2021, it included languages that highlights the importance of self-care, but it also included some revisions to competencies around uh, culture, cultural competency. And so it, it really explicitly emphasizes self-care and cultural responsiveness, uh, working to address social injustice and oppression in much more explicit ways than the, the Code of Ethics used to articulate. Uh, if you wanted to read the entire Code of Ethics, uh, which I really encourage you to do, and I feel like every social work student and practitioner should be required to read the full code of ethics. Uh, you can find that uh, on NASW's website. I'll put a link to that in the description of the video below here. So uh, I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you 
wanted to share some feedback in the comments, I encourage you to do so. What did you learn from the video? What did you find helpful? What do you think I may have missed or not articulated uh, enough or well in this video? Go ahead, uh, give me some feedback in the, in the comments below. Um, if you have any suggestions for content for future videos, we'd love to hear about what you're interested in learning more about. If it's within the scope of my competence, I'll uh, make a video about it. If not, uh, I won't. Or maybe I'll go take a training on it before I make a video on it. Um, and if you wanted to be updated, notified anytime a new video on this channel is released, uh, you could click the subscribe button. I hope you found this video useful. And thanks for watching.